I did, as I said, I checked out some of your stuff and I laughed my head off when I saw it. Oh, thank you. Um, but, you know, and, and, you know, I'm sure you'll go on to be very successful, but when I hear content producers um, talking about quality of content and, and I ever get the sense that they're looking down on other people's content, the only thing I say to them is, the reason you're successful is not because of the fact that you produce better content than someone else. It's because you understand people more than anyone else. Mm -hmm. And the reason you'll be get a better and better filmmaker or a better, better content producer is because you understand people more. And as an investor, what I'm looking for are the people that know other people better than anyone else. Mm -hmm. Either you know them better in a really broad sense or you know them better in a really deep sense that you can pull more and more out of them. So, uh, you, you know, I always, I always say, you know, we talked about how VCs don't invest in content. Mm -hmm. um, I think there is an element of that, but that's because sometimes the content, people think it's the content as opposed to their understanding of human nature which is driving their success. So. Yeah, I think that's a great point. Yeah, I mean, I think on, on our side, um, I think com completely, like quality is, is absolutely uh, arbitrary. And I think a lot of the time, um, what, what we look at when we have a project is also, again, coming from, from a, uh, a very calculated place and learning the business to be able to apply to what are truly art projects. I mean, um, <clears throat> but a lot of the time, what, what I, I find it comes down to is how can you achieve the, the vision, the purest vision, in a responsible and an achievable way? Um, and I think a lot of the time, I think suggesting a little bit on what you're saying is, is, uh, is just creating, I think, is key. And in the same time, like with, um, with, with Kank, I mean, we did a, a song and dance trying to develop it as a film for a year as well. Um, and ultimately, you could just wait or you could just wait or you could just start doing it the way you see that you can do it in the way, in the form mm -hmm. that makes the most sense. And I think that's one other thing that I would probably stress or that's, we've been fortunate also because we're small enough to be able to do this, but we're not tied to one uh, medium specifically. So in our case, it's like, you know, Kank's a graphic novel um, and then next thing you know, we're doing another graphic novel. It's very easy because right now, if you are chasing the, the existing funding bodies, um, a lot of the existing funding would then, would then really encourage you, well, the, the carrot is to get into being a full tilt publishing company, but mm -hmm. that's not where I see a future mm -hmm. uh, necessarily for us. So it's like, you know, we're going into there, but this next one makes sense and we can reach the audience we really want to reach as we, an interactive. We did discuss this in the back and you just said something, you know, chase the funding bodies. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you said it. I mean, uh, how do you feel about the fact you said it? I mean, chasing funding bodies, is that really what people, and I'm not, not saying you're doing it, I'm just oh, saying, yeah, I'm you know, saying that, quite the that whole idea that if there are people out there that are chasing funding bodies, I mean, that sort of is counter against the, the fact that you want to be an artist to create something. You can't chase exactly. funding bodies. I mean, if you want to chase funding bodies, then I think it is about, um, it, is, it is about a more pure delivery. It's not about a business. It's about purity, yep. and, it's a, and, and, and I think it's important that there are funding bodies to fund purity. But don't ever mix funding bodies and, and commercial companies. success. I think, yeah, I think I, you may misunderstood me. I was actually saying the exact same thing. Oh, sorry. Like, my, my whole point is that <laughs> once, once, the, the once we've done donker. two books, for example, then, then the immediate thing would be, you know, if you want to qualify for the carrot that's there, which is if you want to qualify for the incentives as a publisher, now you need to be doing, I believe, I can't, I can't remember, I looked into it at the time, it was four or eight books that were 40 pages each and 200 copies. And now all of a sudden you can qualify as, as a publisher, which is a great carrot. I mean, there's some fantastic incentives and supports for it. But for me, that would have been pushing us to all of a sudden get into a level of publishing and into mm. that specific yeah. media, which at that point I think would have been very irresponsible because I see a lot of writing on the wall in terms of for where that could go for, for me. Mm. So it's again, it's, I think that's, that's actually the, da the danger right now because I think it's, it's a very difficult job for the funding agencies to be responding to a market um, that's changing so quickly. But I think a lot of the incentives right now could drive your, they would actually change your business model in the worst possible way. So, so I actually want to jump in on, on that sure. point because um, I've, I've been thinking about the, the conversation that we had before and the conversation that we're having now about funding. How, I'll throw this out at you. How could funders become more of partners rather than just, you know, here, I give my money to you. How, are there ways that they can become more partners so that it becomes a more a business partnership that enables everyone to win? Yeah. 
Well, I think um, you know there are the people who are the funders, and hopefully there are people who should be funders. There are the people who are the content creators, and those are the people who are passionate about making whatever type of content. Sometimes it's the same people. I have to do the business end of my business because I really have no choice and I need to make money. But really, at the end of the day, I want to be a content creator. Um, one example that we found is that we have worked really closely with a couple sponsors who have funded us on kind of a whatever you want to do, as long as it's brand friendly. And what I mean by that is, we had a, a piece of video that we wanted to make. It was going to be a five minute short film that we had written and we were going to make anyways. And while we were working on that, Intel contacted us and they wanted to uh, integrate product into one of our videos. So we talked about creating an original video for them. They talked about some of their goals. They really wanted to push their new line of Ultrabooks. But I said, hey, we've got a video here that we are totally passionate about that we're making kind of with or without you. Would you like to be involved in this? And they're like, yeah, absolutely. And I'm like, well, with your money, I can make it even better, right? Um, and they were really excited to be a part of that, so we took their money, blew up the video even bigger, but we made a piece of content that didn't feel like really sponsory, really advertising-y. Um, and it, in, in the end, our, our major success story was the comments on the YouTube video it got about 200,000 views, and the comments were that, I didn't realize this was an Intel sponsorship until the end. And it was so cool that Intel let you guys do this. Nice. Really, really nice. Yeah. Chris, I, I, haven't, yeah, I, was gonna I say. think funding entrepreneurs, um, when you throw money at a project and you have very good direction behind it, uh, an investor loves to see it take off. One of the things I think, though, that in the world of content and the more entrepreneurial you are, the more, from our perspective, you start to integrate technology and you want to commercialize, commercializing and creating artistic works are very different. And so if you're going to seek funding to grow a business and pursue um, commercial intent, uh, the, the term in the industry is smart money. It's not enough to just throw money at a project, but seek investors who have contacts, who can open up distribution channels, who can open up new um, contacts to get you into different places. And I think what's changed a lot from where I came from and where we're going and a lot of colleagues in digital media and technology is, it's not enough to just fund a project. You absolutely need someone who's going to bring more to the table than cash. Like we, we fund entrepreneurs. That's, that's what yeah. our tagline is, right? We fund entrepreneurs. But at the end of the day, it's not true. We fund entrepreneurs that wants to build big businesses. And they understand that we come in one day, and in five, six, seven, ten years, ago, ten years along, I'm, I have to get out. Like my money is coming from other entrepreneurs, coming from pension funds, coming from banks. I have to give it back. <laughs> it's kind of like a ten-year loan, and I'm using that loan to actually fund you, right? So, um, so it, it's really about the culture and the DNA behind the entrepreneur and his goals of actually building a big business. If his goal is actually coming out with his little baby that he's passionate about that he just wants to deliver and he has no clue if he actually wants to build a real business behind it, he just wants to get his thing out, well, that doesn't really you know, match, match up with us. It's not compatible. And when we invest, I mean, like at the end of the day, we're a VC fund, so the, the, the most important value we bring to the table is cash. The second most important value that we bring to the table is most likely relationships because we can bring in, like Chris was saying, distributors, clients, partners, uh, we've been around the block a few times, therefore we, we, we have a little, many eyes on the streets. And the third value is talent. We can attract talent. But as an entrepreneur, if you don't want to build a real business and you want, you want to always be the controlling person and not really build a real team, then you know, I'm not really bringing any value other than the cash and it just kind of rattles down, so that yeah. doesn't work. Funding creates bubbles and creates artificial economies in some cases. And if everyone got funded equally, the next thing we would need is all the other things that Chris just mentioned. We would need access to talent. We can all now go out and buy developers and, and creative people. But if everyone has access to the same body, it gets expensive. So having things other than money are critical. Yeah. But so, content is fundable, though. And, and that, I want to be clear that you know Airborne uh, I mean, the founders were extremely happy when we sold the company for over $100 million. Uh, but you said that's not possible today. You said that yeah, was five well, years ago. One that's possible, we just sold uh, a Babel, which is uh, a 
parenting site with parenting content, their own creators of content and applications, all related to a certain subject. They could have been writing books or video, well, they were actually doing blogs and mini videos. Like, it, it was a small content company focused on that area, a la Martha Stewart uh, type. We sold it to Walt Disney. Uh, so what made that VC fundable? That, the entrepreneur. Hmm. He was out to, to build something real and re a real hey, I mean, I'll give you an example. The, the, um, the, the idea that you were just having with, um, uh, with, with not with Dell, with um, Intel. Intel, sorry. You know, the question I would say, okay, the, there was obviously an interesting piece of content that they were happy to be associated with, but how do you how do, you do what you've done once and scale it? Yeah. Uh, yeah. How is it repeatable? I mean, you know, we started off by you talking about build good content, that's what wins. Uh, at the end of the day, it's... It, that we can disagree or degree what the content is but at the moment. And if you want to build a business and you want scale, what you've developed, for example, is a, a solution which is able to quickly understand what's good content, what's not good content. Anything which isn't good content, make sure it doesn't appear so that you don't see it. And the stuff that is that good that's up there, and it's all been automated. Well, there's a, a lot of automation. I'm sure there's a lot of algorithms. So it's what you found of scaling that content quality. Mm. Right. Um, and I think it's, it's when we can find somewhere that scales, mm -hmm. that's where the VC is interested. If you come and say, um, you know, I'm, if, if you come to me and say, I want to produce another piece of content, it's like someone coming to me with a, you know what, I'm going to, I've got a really good mousetrap. And I get thousands of mousetraps, I see thousands of mousetraps, and you know what? Every single one traps mouse, traps mice. And, um, and I think, but I'm not really interested in mice traps. I, what I want to hear is someone come along and say, you know what? I've got a business that takes dead mice and turns them into gold. And, and this is the sort of mindset that we're, we're looking for. 